Now for a look for some of the big takeaways from the Consumer Electronics Show 2025, the tech world's big moment. And our next guest, Daniel Rubino, knows all about it, editor-in-chief at Windows Central. Daniel Rubino, thank you so much for being with us. Um, tell me a little bit about CES. I want to get into all the specific names, some of the hot things. Uh, what's the takeaway from CES 2025? Oh, I think we knew AI would be a big deal. Uh, it is being stuck everywhere, so uh, your TV will soon have AI in it as well. Samsung and LG announced partnerships with Microsoft to bring Copilot, which is their AI tool, to uh, future TVs. Now, you may be wondering like what that would do, but it's the idea that um, it helps shape what you want to watch. So if you watch a bunch of shows, it starts to learn your behaviors, you know, these kind of algorithms we see with Netflix and recommendations. It's this idea of trying to find content that you're interested in. There are already tools like this out on the internet that are really interesting, like a movie finder. You just tell the genre, the year and all this, and it'll recommend a bunch of movies. So you're going to start to see, you know, uh, appliances like that around you get smarter. So that was one of the big things. NVIDIA, of course, uh, did the opening keynote, which was uh, massive attendance. It took uh, two hours of people waiting in line to go see it. So NVIDIA announced, of course, it's RTX uh, 5000 series, and specifically the 5090 card, which costs $2,000. It is the uh, most powerful GPU that they've made so far uh, you know, for gamers. So it's a really big deal there. Um, then when it comes to, uh, they have Project Digits, which is going to be really interesting. It's a $3,000 desktop computer, but don't worry, it's not for consumers. This is for uh, people working with AI. It can handle up to 200 billion parameters, which to put that in context, like GPT-4 is like 20 uh, billion parameters. So this is going to be like a very powerful system. It's going to allow developers to run models locally at home without having to rely on the cloud. Um, there's also, of course, other AI uh, advancements there. I would also say PCs, which I focus heavily on, uh, also had the biggest show I've seen at CES for many, many years now. Uh, AI was a big deal there, but like Lenovo won an award for us because of their new laptop, which has a display that extends upward. So this is a laptop. It looks like a 14-inch laptop totally normal, but you wave your hand or you throw it a switch, the display will actually go upwards and extend by almost three inches. So it goes from 14 to just under 17 inches, giving you a tall vertical display. It's a rollable OLED technology. And it's absolutely crazy. So if you ever wanted a larger screen suddenly, you can now do that with this laptop that goes on sale uh, in the coming quarters. And then, um, I don't know, there were just a couple other uh, LG, and Samsung both announced new TVs. Uh, I like Samsung's uh, anti-reflective technology that they're building into the TV now. So if you have a giant 75 inch TV, but a window's in your room, you always see that glare there. This technology will help uh, break that. We saw more advancements with 8K TVs as well. Um, Trying to think what else there was. Uh, oh yeah, the big thing was the, uh, the, the new, uh, there's a vacuum, the, yeah, so the Dream X50 Ultra Robot Vacuum, which has little legs on it. So it doesn't climb your stairs. So for those who have robot vacuums know this, but the problem with robot vacuums is if they hit little ledges where your door frames are, or it has carpet or something to go over, it gets stuck. So these little legs will literally help it crawl over those things so it can continue to vacuum your whole house. Can't climb stairs yet, but maybe in a couple of years we'll see that. Yeah, for just $1,700, but you'll right. have a very smart, usable vacuum. Hey, why not, right? I mean, how much would exactly. you pay a cleaning crew to come in and vacuum regularly? I don't know. Um, but it's exciting to see the advancement. Would you say the CES show this year was a good one, great one? I mean, you know, some of them, I feel like last year was sort of a little bit um, maybe a disappointment. I think people left feeling not as excited about any particular thing. Uh, how would you describe this one, the takeaway as an adjective? It was definitely better. Uh, the reason is, is because AI was more of a buzzword last year, right? Everybody was kind of catching up and trying to come up with products. This year, you're starting to see these concepts mature into like real usable technology. 
that actually doesn't look wacky and looks useful. And I think we'll continue to see that trend. Uh, so I think that's been just really an exciting thing to watch. It, this technology really is growing. AI is not a buzzword, right? It is really going to be a fundamental technology that changes everything we do in life. And we're starting to see that at CES. And it was a very positive reception that I saw. Yeah, understood. I mean, and even with the um, with the N Nvidia, you were talking about the new series and all that, but you said that the um, RTX 490 can come in at a lower price point if you, if you wanted the 4090 rather than the I guess sure. 5090, right? So you're going to yep. have options. Oh yeah. I, in fact, if you get a 5070, that's going to be as powerful as the 4090 was, but around $500. So, you know, you're seeing a, a real drop in price technically, but if you want the 59, the top tier one, it actually went up in price. But there is a whole range of these GPUs and there's certainly a substantial jump in performance. We're going to start to see those also be used for more uh, AI tasks at home as PCs grow more powerful as well. So besides gaming, these are going to also yeah. have other functions too. Solar technology on an EV, that was something else that caught people's eye, right? This is something I think people have been wondering about whether it can be done, right? The power, the problem with solar panels tends to be efficiency. Uh, they, they collect light very well, but it takes a while, direct exposure. But could you ever build a, a solar car that's practical, right? We've seen concepts of this stuff before, but this is actually going to market uh, pretty soon, I believe. And so, yeah, it's a three wheel thing. This isn't a family sedan. It's not going to you know, replace your uh, cross track or anything like that. But it is this idea of pushing this uh, technology forward. I'll tell you, battery technology is probably one of the most uh, interesting areas to focus on, especially for investors, because uh, how do we improve batteries is going to be such an important uh, thing for going forward with a lot of this technology. So you're seeing a lot of investment there, you know, trying to get away from the rare earth minerals and come up with other solutions. And that's probably a really exciting area to watch. Everybody has their guilty pleasures. I mean, I love watching television. And so uh, AI will help me to like a finder, like a movie finder will help to know exactly what kind of shows I really like to watch. I like hearing about that. You did mention that. How about for gamers? You talked about the goal line handheld uh, for item for oh, gamers. Yeah. That might be exciting, right? If that's your pleasure. Yeah, so the big thing we've been covering for the last two years is the rise of handheld gaming PCs. This is always, they've been around, but they're getting to the point now where the processor and battery life is getting good enough that to make them practical. So Lenovo entered this field last year with the Legion Go, and it was a very popular device uh, at Switch, like the controllers came off, it did all sorts of cool stuff. They uh, are announced a, a version two of that is coming out with AMD's new processor, but they also announced the Go S, which is a slightly different version, slightly smaller. And what's interesting here, it comes with two versions of the operating system. So you buy either or. One will be Windows, of course, but the other one is Steam OS, which is done uh, by Valve. So that's one of the biggest uh, makers of, well, not bakers, but uh, stores for PC games. And uh, they've had a, the Steam Deck for many years. This is the first time they're taking the operating system and allowing OEMs to put it onto new hardware, give them more options out there. But um, when I talk to these companies privately, you know, yeah, handheld gaming is a massive category that's starting to grow right now. And you're going to see uh, Acer announced an 11 inch handheld, which begs the question, it's not really a handheld at that point because it's so massive. But we're starting to see a lot of innovation in this area that's uh, pretty exciting for gamers. Yeah, and what about, um, when we think about PCs and laptops and foldable, we, you and I have talked about foldable phones, foldable this. Um, you did mention the, the laptop that had a tall vertical OLED technology, making it taller even, um, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, so uh, dual screen uh, PCs still, uh, we're seeing second generation of those, so companies are still putting those out. That includes Asus and Lenovo, both have dual screen PCs uh, that are coming. Uh, we will see more of foldable PCs too. Uh, there's refinements that are coming to there. Uh, you, you see, I think one of the big things was Qualcomm announced their Snapdragon X processor. Uh, so this is, you know, the... Uh, the competitor to Intel and uh, AMD, but it's much more efficient. It's similar to Apple's processor, right? But they're targeting now the $600 market for laptops, which is the actual 
range of laptops that most are that most that sell the most, right? We all talk about the two thousand dollar ones, but six to eight hundred dollars is the range most humans actually buy at. So Qualcomm's going to go hard into this market and bring laptops that last twenty hours like in real life usage, uh, which is going to be really impressive and also still have really good battery life. So we haven't seen that before, right? So I think that's gonna be a game changer. Uh, you also have companies like Acer who have recyclable materials built into their Vero laptop. They've been doing this for a couple of years, but they keep going further and further with it. Asus invented a new material called seraluminum, which is really interesting. And they're making a laptop that weighs about 2.1 pounds and that, only costs eight ninety nine, which is really impressive. Yeah. Uh, I would say Asus has been forcing down prices as much as they could. And just quickly, Apple, any products coming out in the next six to twelve months that you're very excited about? Quickly, Daniel. Yeah, probably just refreshes of the current hardware. Um, there's always, of course, rumors floating around that they're working on a foldable display uh, for their phones. I don't know if we'll see that this year, but maybe in the next two years or something like that. Uh, I guarantee they'll probably do that product as well. And Samsung will be announcing some new phones in the coming weeks as well. All right, we will look for all of that. Daniel Rubino, Editor-in-Chief, Windows Central. Thank you for joining us and giving us a whole look at the Consumer Electronics Show 2025. We appreciate it.